This video is sponsored by serverblend.com. Hello everyone! In this video, we will be going through the fundamental knowledge that would help a beginner. If you are an experienced player, I don't think you will learn anything new here. But you can still watch it and point out on something that we might have forgotten. So you guys don't get too confused, I will display here the plan that the video will follow. Your goal, your priorities, gather resources, craft tools, make your first weapon, defend yourself and survive, build a base, upkeep and upgrade your base, PvP and raiding, and finally, the wipe. Your goal. This part is very important as it would give you an overall idea of what you want to achieve in the game in order to have fun and be successful. And like any other thing you want to do, you should set one or multiple goals to feel progression. Rust is a hardcore survival game and it wouldn't dictate to you what you should do or what way you should do it. It is up to you to set up your own objectives. And only you can judge whether you were successful or not as there are no set criteria. Usually, a first goal for everyone should be to make a base in a good location. Then later goals may vary from one to another. Some may want to raid massively. Others may want to make a huge base or in the opposite, a cozy little house. Whichever pleases you. You are your own judge on how to have fun in the game. That being said, let's move on to the priorities. Your first priority would be to find a good server that fits your playstyle. In Rust, there is a lot of servers ranging from vanilla to modded. What is the difference? Well, vanilla is the normal Rust experience with no modifications or plugins, which is the hardest. Gather rates in vanilla servers are not altered. Modded servers have a wide variety of them. There are servers that only alter gather rates, either 2 times or 5 times, etc. There are other servers that have plugins like teleportation, trading, shops. These servers give you a different feeling from vanilla, they are usually less hard. There are other types of modded servers like combat tags or aim train, which are not survival but only made to practice your aim and have fun using all the weapons in the game. In this video, we will only speak about vanilla servers. After you join the server, you will spawn on a beach, with only a rock and a torch. Your priorities would be to survive and stay alive to achieve the first goal we talked about which is to make a base in a good location. This leads us to the next point. Gather resources. The only three important resources for you in the start are going to be wood, stone and cloth. For wood, you will obviously need to hit trees with your rock. For stone, you will need to hit stone nodes which look like this one. And for cloth, you will need to pick up hemp bushes that look like this. After you have gathered a bit of stone and wood, you can make your first stone tool. Either a hatchet to get trees or a pickaxe to get nodes. Tools gather resources much faster than your rock and give more per tree or node. So investing a couple hundred stone and wood into them is completely worth it. You can craft them from the quick craft menu to the right side of your screen when you open your inventory or by accessing the crafting menu by pressing Q on your keyboard. Make your first weapon. It will usually be either a spear or a bow. The bow is obviously the best choice for self defense when you start. To make the bow, you will require 50 cloth and 200 wood. But after you have it, you will still need to make some arrows for it which can easily be crafted from stone and wood in the quick crafting menu. Make in mind that if you have the required resources to make a bow before you have tools, you can go ahead and make it. It's never a bad investment. Defend yourself and survive. Rust is a multiplayer game, which means there will be other players competing to achieve similar goals. Your paths might cross over and in most cases, this means you will need to fight against them. As the minority could be friendly, and even if they claim to be, it might be just an ambush to sympathize then backstab you later for maximum profit. So, in order to survive, you will need to not trust anyone that might take advantage of you and fight against whoever is fighting you and kill them before they kill you, either with a bow or a gun or any other weapon. Okay. 
build a base. This will probably be the most important chapter out of all of them. To avoid getting lost or confused, we will break it down into multiple sections. 1. Choose a good location. 2. Gather enough resources for a base. 3. How to use the building plan and hammer. 4. Lay down your first base and upgrade it. 5. Secure the base with a door and a cupboard. Let's start with choosing a good location. A good location is one that has resources like stone, metal and sulfur, and components, which spawn in barrels and boxes on roads or rat towns, and should be eventually close to a recycler to recycle your unneeded components. Although you could find all these next to a big rat town like the military tunnels for example, but that is where all the big groups and clans settle down, so as a new player you wouldn't last very long in an area full of clans. That being said, the perfect location should also be quite hidden and discreet to avoid being raided very early. I would recommend you settle next to some less crowded areas that are still viable like lighthouses that have a recycler and you can get a lot of components from the sea using a boat. To get a safe base, you would need to gather around 2000 wood and stone to build and upgrade the base itself. But you will also need some cloth to make a sleeping bag inside of your base to be able to spawn in it when you die, and a bit of low grade fuel to make a furnace that will allow you to smelt the ore that you gather. So when you have all these resources, you will need to craft a building plan and a hammer from the quick crafting menu, which is going to lead us to step 3. When you have the building plan and the hammer crafted, place both in your hotbar. When you hold the building plan in your hands, you will have access to a variety of structures that can be built by holding right click on it. These structures get built from twig, which is very weak and can be broken by almost anything. It is mainly used as a layout to what you want to build, but as soon as you make something that you want to keep, you should upgrade the twig to either wood or stone using the hammer. While holding it in your hand, right click on the structure that you want to upgrade and select what you want to upgrade it to. And if you have the required materials, the structure will get upgraded. Your first base should definitely not be a big one. A 1x2 should be more than enough as it doesn't cost much to make an upgrade. New players tend to build massive twig bases then struggle for a long time to gather enough resources to upgrade it and usually die during the process and lose everything. To make a 1x2, follow these steps and keep in mind that you should always upgrade your foundations first as everything else relies on them. Also, making more than one door, or what we call an airlock, is a good way to avoid having someone killing you with the door open and get all your loot. Here's how to make an airlock. To secure your base, you will obviously need doors and locks. To make a triangle airlock, your inside door should open outwards. This way, it will block the entrance even if it's open and also a tool cupboard which is placed inside your base to prevent people from building on your base and therefore griefing you. It also upkeeps the base and prevents it from decaying over time if you put enough resources inside of it. After you're done making the base and you are inside of your new home, you will notice that it feels empty. It needs some furniture. The first piece of furniture you will need will be a sleeping bag. It is the most important as it allows you to spawn inside of your base after you die. Then you will need a furnace which allows you to smelt metal ore and sulfur ore to be able to make use of them. After you smelt them, sulfur can be combined with charcoal and make gunpowder which is used to craft bullets and explosives. Metal fragments are used to craft multiple things like metal doors and weapons and also to upgrade structures to metal which is twice as strong as stone. The third piece of furniture you will need would be boxes to store your loot inside the base. There are two types of boxes, small wooden boxes which have a small storage capacity and large wooden boxes which can store much more loot but require metal fragments to make. After you get all of this, 
you will need to make a workbench that looks like this one. It is not very required in the start, we will talk about it and how to get it and what it is used for a bit later in the video. But all in all, a good starter base would look like this. Of course you can add some more stuff that isn't vital to it like a campfire or a barbecue to cook food, some signs or decoration that you have found outside or however you want to customize it, it is your base after all. After you're done making the base, you will need to worry about upkeeping it and upgrading it. Upkeeping and upgrading the base The base upkeep is managed by the tool cupboard or TC. It prevents the base from decaying. With time, if you gather enough resources, you may want to make your base bigger and harder to raid. Or maybe just bigger to hold more loot. There is no set design that you have to follow. You can go by your own imagination, just keep in mind to avoid some little mistakes like having backwards walls. Or forget to upgrade your frames. Backwards walls are walls that have the soft side facing the outside of the base. It is a problem because walls are much weaker from the soft side and can be easily destroyed using only pickaxes. So make sure to rotate your walls correctly and concerning the frames, always make sure to upgrade them before placing anything on them. Also note that it is always a good practice to spend your stone on the base before logging off while keeping it upkept. Components, Recycling and Scrap Components are the most important thing in the game. Pretty much anything you need to craft, either weapons, armor or deployables require them. They are found in junk piles along the roads, in barrels and crates or junk piles in the sea. They can also be found inside rat towns. Rat towns are monuments across the map. They are radiated so if you want to go inside them, make sure to have enough radiation protection, which is provided by clothing. They usually spawn military crates. Some high tier rat towns can spawn elite crates in them, which have high quality loot and components. I won't go into details of how to loot them, as we have detailed guides for each rat town on our channel. We are missing some rat towns, but are working on making a guide for each rat town as soon as possible. These specific components can be useful if you're looking to craft a specific item. But if you don't want them, you can always recycle them in a recycler, either in a rat town or a mining outpost, a supermarket or a gas station. Each component gives resources when recycled. Most of them also give scrap, which we will talk about shortly after. Components can give quite a bit of resources, ranging from cloth to metal fragments and high quality metal, along with scrap. So it is very useful to recycle them as they can fill up space very quickly inside the base if you don't use them. Scrap. It is pretty much the most important resource to collect after you go through the starter phase. It is used to craft two main things, the research table and workbenches. The research table is used to learn blueprints. When you first join a server, you can't craft everything you want, even if you have the required materials, as most items require you to learn the blueprint to craft them, like weapons, ammo, medical syringes, etc. To learn a blueprint, you will need to acquire the item you want to learn, either from a crate or a player, it doesn't matter. After that, you need to place the item in the research table. It will tell you how much scrap is required to learn that item. Some high tier items require 500 scrap to learn, but the regular items you will need early on won't need more than 75 scrap per item to learn. After you place the scrap, just press begin research, and after 10 seconds, the item you placed will become a blueprint that you can learn. Note that researching an item makes it into a blueprint, so the original item is destroyed in the process. The workbench allows you to craft items that you have researched. As most items in the game can't be crafted by hand and require a workbench. The level of the required workbench depends on the tier of the item. An AK for example requires a workbench level 3, which is the highest level workbench you can make. A revolver only requires a workbench level 1 and so on. 
If you go to the crafting menu, you can search up any item you want even if you haven't learned it yet, and you can see which workmanship requires to be crafted. So you can know in advance whether it is worth researching it at the moment or not. Workbenches also speed up the crafting times. PvP and Raiden Rust is a PvP game, so if you're good at it, chances are you will do much better than if you only farm. It takes practice and time to become good at it, but here are some tips that would help you understand it more and speed up the process. The most important tip to keep in mind is to crouch when you shoot guns. It reduces the recoil significantly. Sometimes it is almost impossible to control the gun when you're standing up, so have the reflex of crouching when you want to shoot. Another tip might seem obvious, but some people might forget about it. You should have your health at the maximum level you are able to get it to before going outside or engaging in a fight. Sometimes, one extra HP can make the difference between whether you win or lose a fight. For that matter, you can use food and stand next to a campfire to heal up, or bandages which are crafted using cloth, or even syringes and medkits. Sometimes, when you take damage, you are able to heal a portion of your health by drinking water, either from a river or a container. Also, armor and clothing reduces the damage taken, so consider wearing some before taking your best weapon outside. Raiding in Rust means getting into someone else's base, using either explosives to blow in, like C4, rockets or satchels, or using a sword for example or a flamethrower and a shotgun, if it's a wooden base or a door, and take their loot. It can be a very profitable way to invest your gunpowder. Also, keep in mind that gunpowder is usually the most valuable resource, so try to keep it in the most secured loot room or box inside your base, or even inside the TC and lock it. The wipe. After you have spent days or weeks on the server doing all what we talked about, comes what we call the wipe day, and it means that the server will remove everything including bases, loot, etc and change the map to another procedurally generated one for everyone to start a new adventure. And this is the fun in Rust because every wipe you play is different from the previous ones and is a complete new life. And that was the cycle of Rust. If you want to start your own Rust server, check out our sponsor, serverblend.com. They offer by far the best servers. The link to their website is in the description.